Cellular data performance, your speeds and reliability, a critical part of using cellular as a mobile internet solution. Today we're going to be talking about the things that impact your performance. And the things that you can do to, well, counteract those things that are impacting your performance. Hi there, I'm Cherie. And I'm Chris. And we are the hosts of the Mobile Internet Resource Center, where we help our viewers and voters keep online with educational content and keeping on top of the industry. And of course, a lot of us are using cellular as a data connection on the go. And we want the best performance. We want those high speeds. We want reliability. And there's a lot of things that can impact this. And it's a whole lot more than just paying attention to the bars on your phone. It's not about the bars, it is about the ultimate performance that you get. You know, how fast is your connection? Is your data dropping out? Things like that. And, well, there's a lot of things that can impact that way, actual performance you end up seeing. But first you might be asking, how much speed do you need? What are you <laughs> looking for in a good connection? And that's going to depend upon what you want to be able to do online. Video things, they take a lot more data and more speed than something like just checking email. Now, Again, we, we often look for, like, if we're getting, like, 15 megabits per second down and, like, you know, 3 to 5 megabits per second up, we consider that, oh, we can get most of our typical work done without too much problem. More is better. Over 100 megabits per second is happy dance time, and sometimes you can get by with even less. But, you know, you got to shoot for your own personal minimums based on what you're trying to do. But if you're doing video conferencing and wanting to stream Netflix at night, Aiming for that 10 to 50 megabits per second down and 3 to 5 up is a really good benchmark, but there's a whole bunch of other considerations that you can take in that. Now, of course, also when you are testing your speeds, there are a bunch of ways to do that with different apps like the Speed Test app. We have an entire guide that goes over speed testing tips and how to evaluate the readings that you get. Uh, so go look at that as well. For, uh, the reliability, uh, that's something that you're really only going to notice over time is how stable is your connection when you're trying to use it. Yes, does it drop off at random bits and bit pieces in time? Does your upload stall? Do pages not fully finish loading? Things like that, you will notice reliability issues. The speeds you could check pretty quickly. And again, pay attention to those things and not to the bars. You could sometimes have an absolutely fast, fabulous, and reliable one bar signal and a horrible, slow, and unreliable five bar signal. And it's all because of these factors that we're about to talk about. The quality of the signal that is being received by your device can have a huge impact on the performance that you're receiving. And there's a lot of things that can impact that quality of signal. They're usually physical things. Now, we're going to go through the list of them here. And in this case, actually, the bars might have some meaning because they're a bit of a bit of a proxy of how good is the physical signal that is getting to your phone, your hotspot, your router. Now, one of the most important things that can impact the quality of the signal is the physical distance between you and the tower. And there's one way right over there. The distance matters a lot. Radio frequencies drop off over distance, but not all frequencies are created equal. Lower frequency signals travel a lot further than higher frequency signals. So you might have like low band, um, 600 megahertz, 700 megahertz cellular signals can go 10, 15, maybe even 20 miles away from the tower and still be picked up. Whereas higher frequency signals might only go two, three, four miles. And things like millimeter wave signals might only travel a few hundred feet. That's why they're only really used on super high speed, short range 5G. So. Different frequencies travel different distances, and the distance matters a lot. Now, you know, short of driving to be closer to the tower, which sometimes is an option, one of the things you can do to help compensate for the distance is to have a higher gain antenna, basically focusing an antenna that can reach out to a signal further on the horizon by narrowing its scope, or sometimes like a cellular booster can help you be heard over a further distance. It amplifies the tiny little radio in a phone or mobile device to be a louder broadcast so the tower can hear you from a further distance. But there's still some other factors that might impact your connection over distance because, well, sometimes even if you can hear the tower and the tower can hear you, cell towers might be configured to ignore any connections from outside of the serving cell distance that they're designed to set up and be configured to serve. And so, 
you got to worry about is the tower actually paying attention to you sometimes as well. Now next up as far as the physical things that impact uh, your signal is not just distance but it is the line of sight. If you can see the tower over there odds are the tower can see you, hear you, and communicate with you. If there's things in between you and the tower whether it's a ridge, trees, other RVs, buildings, anything, any physical obstructions are going to have a huge impact on your performance. A lot more than just distance. Obstructions cause a lot of issues. Line of sight is everything. It matters so much. Now, ways you can improve line of sight is, well, the simplest is usually getting an antenna up and above the clutter, up above the ground clutter so you, it can see further. It can see the tower at a distance. It gets above the RV that's parked next to you, above the, the dock that your boat is at. So having your antenna up high makes a huge difference. Now related to line of sight is obstructions that are caused by your own gear. Um, if you're inside, well, you're basically blocking line of sight in nearly every direction and different materials block signal different ways. Uh, fiberglass is okay, the signal will go through it okay. Windows, most windows are okay. But if you've got like a metal van, a metal boat, a metal RV, metal walls block signal very, very effectively. Those obstructions can be very significant. If you're parked inside a metal garage or next to a building with aluminum siding, that can have horrible, horrible impacts on your signal. So again, the best way to get around that sort of issues is to um, get out of the obstructions. You know. Get outside, get your, your device mount, put it in a, a window. You know, use a suction cup mount to put your device in a window. Get antennas out up, up, up on your roof, up on your flybridge, outside where you've got better chance of avoiding obstructions. And then finally, the one other thing that can be impacting the quality of your signal is just signal interference. Other things broadcasting on the same channels, you know, basically causing you know, like two FM channels conflicting with each other when you get to the fringe of radio broadcast. If there's signal interference, your signal quality goes way down. This could be caused by other transmitters, other cell towers, other cell carriers in the area trying to use some of the same frequency bands. If you're in between the boundary of cells, that's why there's often dead zones there. Um, it can be caused by Storms, electrical storms can be causing interference. It can be caused by solar flares and solar storms. It can be caused by a badly tuned microwave that's leaking radiation. Um, there's, you know, things with, when it comes down to just random interference, there's often not a lot you can do other than just try to move away from the interference. If there's a spot over here where you're getting bad signal and over here you're getting good signal, might be interference, that's the factor. And well, you might just have to move a little bit. All right, some of the other things that can impact your actual performance that you get is the modem that is inside of your cellular device. Whether you are dealing with mobile hotspots, cellular embedded routers, cellular tablets, or smartphones, they all have a modem inside, which is what takes that cellular signal, converts it to data that you use to get online. And the modem has specifications that impact how fast and how many frequency bands they can connect to. As the carriers move into the future and they deploy new bands and the modems advance in technology, it all is moving forward. And if you have an older device, you might be stuck in the slow lane. And it's worthwhile upgrading your equipment every couple of years to keep up with technology so you're getting the best performance. Because that modem inside, an older one, will be able to connect to less frequency bands and be able to do less with those frequency bands when they do connect to them. A more advanced modem is able to see more frequency bands and able to combine more of those bands together to give you better performance. And the difference between like a category four modem and a category 18 modem can be substantial. And we do have a full guide going over modem specifications and a video going over showing you some head-to-head -head comparisons of how that modem difference can make a difference. So when you are researching your gear, make sure you're looking at the current flagship options that are on the market so that you are giving yourself the most amount of future proofing, giving you the most amount of coverage out there, as well as the best performance that you can get with your device. Next is the data plan that you have subscribed to for your cellular data connection. And a lot of the terms of your plan can impact your performance. 
two of the most popular ones that you might already have known about is throttling and network management. Now, throttling is on your plan that is usually very clearly specified, and it might apply only to certain activities like your mobile hotspot use, if you're using mobile hotspot off of a smartphone or a tablet, or it might be for video resolution. When you have mobile hotspot throttling limitations, they might be for all of your mobile hotspot use, like some plans restrict you to 5 megabit per second. Others might give you a certain amount at high speed, and then after you hit that amount in your month, the rest of your mobile hotspot use is dropped off to a very very slow speed for the remainder of the month. That's throttling. It doesn't matter how much network congestion there is, you are always capped at a certain speed. With video, some plans tell you that they will only do SD video or HD video. And what they do is they actually are slowing the speeds of any video traffic. So if you're downloading from YouTube or Netflix or Hulu, the carrier can detect the type of data that you are using and they slow it down so that you get a lower resolution experience on your video streaming so you're using less data. Now another one is network management and some of the carriers have gone to calling this priority data. Basically different plans are priced based upon giving you priority on their networks. So if you have a priority data plan, you get maybe a certain amount or maybe all of your data, maybe all of your data only when you're using it on your smartphone, but not for mobile hotspot use or video or anything like that, you are getting priority level data. And what this means is that when you are on a regular tower, pretty much everyone has the same speed. The, the carriers aren't having to manage their network to deliver the demand that's out there. But if you are on a congested tower, you get somewhere where there's a lot of population, maybe a seasonal influx, or as our RVers know, as we head to the southern states during the winter, we go to Quartzsite or we go to Orlando, Florida, those areas can get really congested for a couple of months out of the year. Well, the speeds on the towers just go down because everyone is there trying to use their data plans and there's just not enough capacity to go around. So someone who is subject to network management on their plan or a lower priority, this might be a prepaid plan, this might be a terms on a plan after a certain amount of usage, or it just might be a lower priority plan that you've purchased, you're going to be in a lower priority than someone who has priority data on their plan. And if you compared those two devices, now remember, your modems have to be almost identical, and you have a plan that's subject to priority data and network management, and you do them side by side, you're probably going to see that network manage plan be slower. It can be hard to detect. Now, how can you get around this? Well, you can go somewhere that's not congested. That's a great option. You can wait till next season, which might not be an option. Unfortunately, there's not a lot that you can do with network management to get around it because it's a term on your plan. But you can play around sometimes with the signal, maybe reach a further away tower. You might be able to play with advanced features on some routers like band locking to be able to find the frequency bands that are less congested and get on those. So there's a lot of options that are out there, some of them convenient, some of them not, but Congestion is a hard one to get around. That's why we preach redundancy and having multiple carriers, because you might find on Verizon as being very congested, but at t might not be, so you can switch around your carriers and get a faster connection. Now that was a lot of information. There is a guide that we have that goes along with this. You can find it right down below. Go over there, you can get a recap of all of this information. And if you're one of our premium members, be sure you're logged in. There is a whole bunch more to this guide that goes into a lot more depth on these topics to help you maximize your data performance where you are with your gear. And of course, there's a lot more to selecting a cellular-based system for mobile internet from selecting your right gear, your signal enhancing strategy, and your data plans. And we have resources for all of that. We are honored to be able to give away a lot of that for free. It's all made possible by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados, who keep us funded so we can be unbiased we are not sponsored, we are not selling any of this stuff, and we don't rely on third-party advertising to bring you this content. But our premium members, and thanks for their funding, go further. They get more in-depth content. They have classrooms for learning. They can come into our forums and ask questions and get interactive guidance from our staff. And of course, they can also come to our webinars and some vendors give discounts as well. So if mobile internet is going to be an important part of your lifestyle, consider membership. Help us make this content possible. Go further and get the guidance that you need to find your bright mobile internet solution. So hopefully this has helped you figure out some things and some tips on getting your best cellular data performance. And we hope that at your next location, 
you're able to be online as much as you want to be. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.